Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to talk about The Watch, uh, which is a tabletop role-playing game by Anna Kreter and Andrews Medeiros, Andrew Medeiros. And uh, specifically today I'm going to talk about the moves that are in the game. So The Watch is a, a Power by the Apocalypse game, and it specifically has moves uh, that are structured uh, the way moves are structured within a Power by the Apocalypse game. Uh, so let's talk about those moves. So here's the basic structure for the moves within... Uh, within the watch. So there are triggering moves, there are forward ongoing hold moves, there are basic moves, there are harm and healing moves, uh, there are, there, and there are secondary moves. Okay. Um, so, so basically the moves, uh, they come in active and reactive, right? So let me give you some examples of some of the moves that are in the game. Uh, and also this is me, uh, this is a continue, me continuing um, to review this game, to talk about my, my take on, on what was accomplished within the review. And this is me specifically talking about my take on how they pre presented the moves and how they executed on the moves. Okay, so moves. Um, uh, so one of the so some of the active moves are blow off steam. That uses attribute of luck, which is an attribute for the player characters. Uh, they use let shadow in. That comes off your number of jaded moves. The number of jaded moves that you have uh, is uh, is this move, let the shadow in. So this this move specifically is allowing yourself to to let the shadow in. Now the shadow is what you're fighting for. The watch fights on the the front lines where the shadow is encroaching in upon the clans. So letting the shadow in is allowing the evil that is the shadow to come into you and of course that, that you know why would you do that because that's going to be obviously bad right well the reason you would do that is uh, you get power from it you directly get power from it it's very much like light side dark side where if you use the dark side of the force you're going to quickly gain some power like that it can be used virtually immediately right and so that is part part of the game um look beyond uh so basically this is uh, this is normal perception. Uh, so basically, uh, it's just perceiving, right? Um, then uh, open yourself. Open. Oh, here's the next move. The next active move is open. Open up to someone, right? And so this uses valor, right? This specifically uses valor, uh, and then pro, your which is an, an attribute. Uh, and then provoke someone to act is another active move. Uh, it provokes someone is the move, and you're provoking them to act, right? And that comes off of luck, which is a really key aspect in this game. It's a really important attribute that's used within the game. So here you have these active moves. You have blow off steam, let the shadow in, look beyond, uh, open up to someone, and provoke someone. And I'm sorry, I think look beyond can be used for normal perception, and it can be used to even beyond normal perception. Okay, all right. So, so those are so one of the things I love about the Power by the Apocalypse games is how powerful these moves are, and how the the these really integral things that the player characters can do come directly from what the player characters are choosing to do. Right, and and the moves really show you what this game is about and what you should be focusing on. Right. There isn't like cleave, right? You know, like uh, if you hit someone and kill them, then you can strike again, right? That's just not what this game is about. This game is talking much more about spirit and much more about emotion. Um, it's dealing with um, successes, emotional successes, emotion, spiritual successes, uh, in addition to physical successes in combat, right? Um, so this game goes much beyond combat, right? Uh, so let's talk about some of the reactive moves. Some of the reactive moves are need a hand. Um, this, uh, so if, if you do need the reactive move, need, need a hand, use camaraderie, right? And camaraderie is a resource that you build up and that you spend and you can use for things. Camaraderie is, is literally friendship, right? So friendship is a resource within this game, which you burn and use, like you spend it like money, which is a really really interesting uh, factor. Like, um, you just don't see anything like that in Dungeons & Dragons, right? I, I, I believe friendship is an incredibly powerful resource. It truly is, right? Um, it's got to be used correctly. It's got to be used carefully, but it's an incredibly powerful resource. 
virtually no tabletop role-playing games ever talk about this or really give you any kind of mechanical benefit from it. This game does, right? Um, uh, here's a reactive move. Prevent blood sh uh, bloodshed. For that, you rely on training, which is an which is essentially an attribute that you use in this game, okay? Uh, and then finally, you, you use rely on your training. Uh, and of course, you're using training for that. It's another reactive move. Um, that let, uh, the, the rely on your training, it cannot be highlighted. Uh, you don't gain XP for this. By the way, all of the moves, when you use uh, your moves, you have an opportunity to gain experience in this game. Very direct incentive to use your moves within this game. It's very powered by the apocalypse structure, right? Um, and then, uh, so basically, uh, in order by a quick note on let the shadow in, which was an active one, you have to know the person or the location in order to do in order to do that. Okay. Um, so basically, let's talk a little bit more about us. Uh, uh, let's. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I should put this section first, but I'll, I'll say it now. How do you actually do moves in this game, right? Well, it's just like any other Power by the Apocalypse game. You roll a 2d6, um, and then you add your stats, right? So you could add your luck, or you could add um, your valor, right? Uh, you would, And you would have a plus one or plus two uh, in those, okay? So you roll a 2d6, and here's what happens. If you get a six or lower, you fail, period, done. If you get a seven, eight, or nine you succeed with a cost, okay? So you're gonna get what you, you, you're gonna succeed in what you were trying to do, but you're, you're gonna pay a high cost for that, okay? And then last, if you do a 10 or above, you're gonna get a success with no cost, okay? And you're gonna succeed, uh, actually if you get a 10 or above, 10, 11, or 12 on 2d6, you succeed with no cost. And that's that's it, That's it's a really simple, fast system. Right uh, now, I will say this: that rolling is simple and fast. Plowed by the Apocalypse games are absolutely not simple games. They are really the deep end of the pool for tabletop role-playing games, in my opinion. And the reason why is they're very esoteric and um, niche. Uh, now, niche is niche is wrong. Uh, niche doesn't have port, so they're not simple. They really are esoteric is the right word. They, you know, you. I I feel like Powered by the Apocalypse is a great rule set if you know a bunch of game designers and you literally have game designers as players. Not just people who have been game masters, but literally game designers. I think PBTA is an and I and unfortunately I think this is very true of the watch. You're gonna have a blast playing the watch if you have an entire table of game designers, right? Every seat is being taken up by a game designer, right? Uh, you're probably going to be able to have everybody play and understand what's happening if you have an entire table of, of skilled veteran game masters, right? But if you bring traditional players to this game, there's a serious, serious chance they're not going to understand what's happening in this game because Powered by the, powered by the Apocalypse rules are so esoteric. That has nothing to do with the watch. It has to do with the Powered by the Apocalypse, Okay. So, so that's how the moves work. Uh, the moves are triggered by a player's description. So you say what you're going to do, and then that is converted into uh, blow off steam or let shadow in or look beyond or open up to someone or provoke someone or need a hand or prevent bloodshed or rely on your training, right? So all those are there, right? Um, uh, forward, ongoing, and hold, uh, you get... Uh, forward, you take a plus one forward. Uh, ongoing, uh, and so basically, uh, you uh, ongoing, you take a plus one going forward, and then last hold is uh, you get a plus one for duration of a particular uh, time within the game. Okay, so uh, by the way, NPCs, non-player characters, can use moves. Very important to realize. Okay, let's talk about camaraderie and weariness. Um, so per uh, so basically, uh, there's a max of three. So you you the you have values for both of this. You have values for camaraderie and you have values for weariness. Okay. Um, if you need a hand, uh, you can spend camaraderie. So when you do need a hand, that move you can spend camaraderie to boost a roll. Okay. Uh, NPCs can spend camaraderie also to aid to aid player characters. All right. 
Weariness, uh, it's a big part of this game because you're fighting on those front lines and weariness is a really very, it's quite tangible in this game. Uh, you can sur you, There's a, a move that's called Surrender to Weariness. It damages relationships and you lose camaraderie with two characters, right? So, you, by the way, your camaraderie is literally specific to other non-player characters or to player characters. So, like, again, this game really deals with... Uh, with relationships between the player characters, between the non-player characters, at a depth and a level that many, many games never even approach, okay? Um, uh, the move Harm, okay? Uh, you can, there's a Suffer Great Harm move. Uh, you are, it's fixed by luck. Uh, it's, it, it is fixed by luck. And, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you Suffer Great far, Harm, it's fixed by Lick your, uh, by Lick Wounds, which is, Lick Wounds is actually another move, okay? And, or it can be uh, fixed by a Spider Mender, which is a specifically, um, uh, by Spider's, uh, a Mender move. So a Mender move is specifically a move that can be used by a Spider, which is a class within the game, okay? And, uh, and it also, and, and also Suffering Great Arm can be fixed by relying on training. So it can be fixed by Lick Wounds move, by a spider, uh, by a spider's mender move, or relying on training, okay? And then, um, this is awesome. When you suffer great harm, what happens to you? Well, you lose an advance, so you lose something that you gained in ex with experience, or you lose minus one in stats, or you are maimed, right? Like, so you lose an arm, or an eye, or a finger. That is very direct and very real. I love how this game, uh, how the watch specifically deals with wounds, uh, deals with being maimed, deals with losing uh, skills that you've gained, right? Like, so if you gained ambidexterity and that, you know, through through an advance, through ex experience points, and then you make a mistake, uh, and then you and then you, t you, you use the suffer great harm move, right? Uh, then you are going to lose, you could lose that ambidexterity. Uh, very, very real, very natural. I just love that aspect of the game. Um, so, so basically, all Powered by the Apocalypse games apply moves as so. So, you know, all Powered by the Apocalypse rules, they all use that roll two d six, six or below, um, you fail. Uh, seven, eight, or nine succeed with a cost. Uh, Ten or above succeed no cost. Right? Super simple. All Powered by the Apocalypse games do that, but then they make themselves unique and special by how they handle, specifically by how they handle um, these, uh, by how they handle, by, by what moves they make, right? And one of the things I love, and Anna Creter did a fantastic job in this game, of painting the world with the moves. All Powered by the Apocalypse games uh, give the game designer an opportunity to paint the world with the moves that are chosen in the game. Um, and uh, I thought Andrew Creter did a really exceptional job for this. I've read, I've read many Powered by the Apocalypse games. Different game designers do a better job of using moves to paint the world than others. Uh, Anna Creter did a really exceptional job in this, in using the moves to paint the world. Um, so that is, uh, and so uh, that's my review, uh, specifically of the moves within uh, the game The Watch. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing. Take care.